Okay, so in, last time we talked about interactivity, mouse input, keyboard, buttons, and that kind of stuff. And that leads us into thinking about animation. Um, now, of course, tools like Blender, Maya, Unity are incredibly complex, tons of math involved, and things made with those tools, like um, you know, an animated Pixar movie or a, um, you know, a TV show, something like that, uh, are obviously also really, really complicated and way out of the scope of what we can do writing our own code. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't make really cool, super immersive uh, animations using the things that we've covered so far. Uh, and in fact, in the last video that, of this series um, where we talk about the homework, um, you're gonna see a whole bunch of examples throughout the history of animation where using these simple ideas of shape color, rotation, position, speed, um, those things can create these like really, really amazing animations. Um, so temporary expectations in terms of, you know, being able to do full characters and stuff, but we'll see today a whole bunch of the really cool stuff that we can do with P5.js for animation. Um, before we dive in, let's first talk about like what is animation. We can think of animation as things changing over time. So um, and all of the different parameters that we could animate are all the kinds of things that we've talked about so far. Things like position, color, rotation, all of that kind of stuff. So these first few videos are going to cover those fundamental ideas. And a lot of the uh, basic ideas are going to be very repetitive. I have a cat sneaking through. <laughs> Thank you, Khan. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, he really likes to hang out on the radiator and then come over here and bother me while I'm trying to type. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, we, a lot of the examples we're going to look at in the next few are going to have some repetitive elements, you know, the same kinds of ideas. So if you're like, cool, I got it, this makes sense, you can kind of jump ahead or just look at the code for those um, and jump past the basics ones. Uh, but we're going to build some of these examples together so you can kind of see how we might change those different parameters over time. Um, and before we dive into Sorry, we're gonna put this cat over here. Come on, buddy. Oh. Um, I'm gonna show you how I have this set up for running this example. So um, the first thing I have is a folder uh, where I have my project and I've got my sketch.js and my index.html file. Um, if you didn't see the video on using the external editor, that's from the interactivity uh, set of videos from last time. So you can go check that out. There's more details. Um, and then, so I have those two files and in my index.html, I'm loading p5.js from the server rather than locally. You could do it either way, it would be fine. You'll also see I'm loading the sound library and this extra thing here. We'll talk about that stuff later. And then in order for this to be able to work on my computer, um, your browser may or may not yell at you if you try to load a local file. It's trying to protect you. I think it's super annoying, but what are you gonna do? So the way to fix this is this tool browser sync that we talked about last time as well, um, which creates like a local web server on your computer and gets around all of those issues. So we're not gonna go into how to install that, but I'll show you how I'm getting that running here. I've got my folder with my sketch. And the first thing I need to do in the terminal um, is to navigate to that folder. And so, uh, sorry, if you're a Windows user, these are going to be a little different, the commands, but if you're on a Mac or a Linux machine, this should be the same. So CD is change directory. And then I can actually, if you're on a Mac, this is really easy. I can just drag this little icon here and it'll paste it right in. And now I'm in that folder. I can see, for example, my files are here. And then to run browser sync, um, I'm just using the up arrow to go back on the commands that I've used previously, which is easier than remembering everything. Um, and basically I'm starting a server and it's gonna watch my files there and boom. So it's actually, it's opening a separate tab or second tab, but it's the same thing. Um, and you'll notice it says localhost 3000. That's just the address basically of this local web server. And it's gonna load my index file just like that. So super easy I, once you have it all set up. It's a little confusing. You could of course also work in the web editor if you wanted to do that. Okay, so we're gonna start by thinking about angle of rotation. I think this is maybe the easiest thing for us to update or to animate. Um, and to do this, we're gonna need global variables because these are things that are gonna be accessible throughout our program and we wanna have change over time. So if I created a variable in draw, it's only gonna exist in that um, one run through of draw, and then it's gonna keep resetting itself every frame, which is not what we want. 
Um, so I'm going to call this angle because we're changing the angle of something. And then um, this should be real easy. I want to draw a circle, a square in the center that rotates around. So I'm going to use uh, push and pop for this uh, because rotate requires us to rotate around the origin. I'm going to translate to the position. And then I'm going to uh, rotate by my angle. Super easy. And then I can uh, you know, draw my shape. No stroke. I'm going to use rect mode center for this. That's going to draw it like an ellipse from the center point out rather than from the corner and over and down. It's just going to make it a little easier for me. And then uh, draw my square. So this will be at 0, 0. And I don't know, let's make this 100 and try that. now. I'm going to save it because I'm working locally. I have to save it. And then I need to refresh my browser. And we see my square, but it's not moving. Um, and if you can think about why for a second, uh, the reason is that I'm not changing this angle. It's staying at 0. So then at the end of my loop here, uh, I'm going to update angle plus equals. Um, remember, angle is measured in uh, radians, which goes from 0 to 2 pi. 2 pi is a full circle. Um, and so you can either type this in in radians, or I find it easier to think in degrees and do the conversion. So this uh, radians command converts from degrees to radians. And now, hey, we have animation. It's changing on its own. Every frame this angle shifts. Um, if we change this number here, it'll rotate faster or slower. Uh, we can also change the direction of rotation by, instead of adding this number, we could subtract. So now it'll go the opposite direction, which is pretty cool. Um, let's make this a little bigger. And I'm going to change this back. And let's add one more thing here. So um, this will be a little bit fancier. I'm just going to tidy this up, get this all in one spot. Cool. So let's say I want to have a bunch of uh, squares that rotate in a circle around kind of orbit this square. Um, and to do that, we need to think about a couple of things. So one is that we want to have um, these individual shapes. We need to figure out how to go around in a circle. And to do that, we can use a for loop. So A is going to be, I'm thinking about my angle increment kind of around this thing here. So I'm going to set A equals starting at 0. A is less than a full circle. And then um, this amount here is going to set, let me just move this over for you, um, this is going to change uh, how far apart they are in an angular way. So I'm going to do 30 degrees, and we can try changing that and see how it, how it looks. So then in this loop, I can use push and pop again to go to the center and then offset from the, the center point. So say push, and I always like to do push and pop together just so I don't forget. So we want to go to the center again. Then we want to, so the order of these things is really important. I want to go to the middle. Then I want to rotate by my angle, because remember, we always rotate around the origin. So I'm going to rotate, and then I'm going to move out to the spot I want it to be. So I'm going to say rotate A. Translate is now going to move me at that angle out. And so I'm going to move by 0 in the x direction and 200 in the y direction going to do rec mode center again. It actually, I don't need it because it's already here, but I think it's just easier to see it. And then let's do a square at 0, 0, and 50. And if all goes well, cool. There we go. So now what we're not seeing is these guys move. Um, and that's because we're, you know, this rotation is always fixed. We're always kind of an array around here. So we can do um, one more rotate here. After our translate, we can do rotate, and we can use the same angle. And now these little guys spin around in this array. Um, if we wanted them to go the other way, we could make this negative angle. And already, so this is super simple. It's just rotation. It's just shapes. But I think this is kind of mesmerizing. You could imagine adding 
overlap, lots of these other shapes together, um, maybe having different uh, speeds of rotation, that kind of thing, could start to make some really cool visuals just with this one thing. Um, in the next examples, we'll build on the same kind of idea, talking about position, uh, size, and color. Um, but if this idea of changing things over time makes sense to you, you can kind of skim through those and jump ahead to the next ones after that.